and uh, it's uh, fitting that we have the last talk by one of the founding members of this uh, complex systems group here at IIT Madras. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Sunetra Sarkar uh, from IIT Madras. She's a professor in the Department of Aerospace Engineering and she heads the Biomimetics and Dynamics uh, Laboratory. Uh, professor Sarkar obtained her PhD from Indian Institute of Science Bangalore in 2005. Uh, following which she did her postdoctoral stint at Faculty of Aerospace Engineering, uh, TU Delft, in the Netherlands from 2005 to 2006. Uh, she was subsequently uh, a NWO Rubicon Fellow uh, in the Netherlands itself from till 2007, following which she joined IIT Madras. Uh, in between, she has also been a visiting scientist at the Chamias, uh, Chamias University, Sweden in 2010. Uh, she has won uh, the prestigious Amelia Earhart Fellowship uh, for Women Scientists in Aerospace Sciences and Engineering. Her research uh, focuses on aerodynamics of flapping wing flights, a deterministic and stochastic treatment of nonlinear flow and fluid structure interaction problems. Uh, over the last years, many years, she has been working on computational modeling with the focus on uh, developing efficient numerical uh, solvers and also trying to recently uh, harmonize them with experimental uh, uh, approaches. So today we are going to hear her talk about dynamics of biomimetic flapping and the related multiphysics systems. Uh, Professor Sarkar, you could get started when you're ready. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Anupab. Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes. Okay, so Hello everyone and welcome back. This is the last session of last day of our workshop. Uh, good evening and uh, really happy to see that some people are still here because uh, this is Saturday evening for us. And uh, so without you know wasting any more time on introduction, let me just uh, get straight on to it. I'm Sunetra Sarkar and I am at the Aerospace Engineering Department. The, the research focus of my group is uh, one of the research focus is understanding the flow field of flapping bodies. So uh, these bodies are usually, you know, aerodynamically shaped, streamlined bodies. So we can say that these are wings, wing-like structures. So we are, try to understand the flow field of rapidly moving wing-like structures and the associated uh, multiphysics uh, system. So multiphysics is a common enough term in our engineering departments, especially where we you know, try to think of uh, systems which are separate, who follow their separate governing equation, but they come together under circumstances in various engineering structures. It is, it is possible to have both in the context of, you know, our research It's like the flow system and the structure system, the flow system, is quite intricate, and uh, as this uh, you know title slide is showing, there is a lot of you know uh, intricate structure interacting with each other. So the flow field is could be quite complex, and it is now acting on engineering structures, which again could be very flexible, very deformable, which itself can you know influence a lot the flow field. So together they can get combined and influence each other. So that is what a multiphysics system in the context of uh, today's presentation going to be. So we try to understand the dynamics of such combined or coupled systems. And today I'm going to talk about an application which is uh, quite futuristic. It is, uh, it is going to focus on the dynamics of flapping type micro aerial vehicles or more commonly known as uh, drones. So I'm, I'm saying futuristic because uh, flapping type drones are uh, really not uh, too many in, you know, uh, commercially available in today's market. We, we do have certain knowledge of flapping type drones. There are various lab prototypes of, you know, various uh, uh, accuracy and stability levels. But uh, for our day to day operations, the other types of drones that we see, we do not see the flapping type too many. You, you must have seen drones being applied everywhere, but uh, really the flapping types are limited still, mainly because our knowledge on the flapping flight is still you know, developing. It's de developing quite rapidly, but it is still not as good as nature has it. So these are essentially biomimetic flights. We take inspiration from nature because nature is the best teacher in this. 
superb flight, superb maneuverability, superb control, you know, really agile, you know, really small, but we are still, you know, far away from going there. So we are, we are developing and we hope in the near future, we will be able to mimic nature in a, in a much better way, much accurate way. So this is uh, quite an active area of research and uh, the analysis is also quite involved because in order to resolve this, you know, intricate flow field in order to resolve the structural feedback in time on this flow field requires really high resolution experimental setup or you know, um, very high fidelity uh, solution procedure simulation numerical simulation so uh, um, these are governed by you know uh, here and we are going to focus for this workshop we are going to focus on understanding how the dynamics of the systems evolve so we would like to find out if in in this complexity in this very complex system whether we have you know bifurcations present whether we can actually find out establish chaos or you know other types of uh, periodicity essentially any venturing out of the periodic regime which we welcome is going to be you know this is going to be our focus and we'd like we also hope to capture the the route to chaos in this kind of uh, very large order systems these are large order systems because we're governed by navier stokes equation and uh, we also have the structural equation if the structural uh, feedback is important and this uh, PDEs are going to be discretized on a large spatial domain, depending on how you know intricate the structure is. The <clears throat> discretization has to be really high resolution. So this is going to be you know almost in a very large number of unknowns that we are dealing with. So the challenge is to find out whether you can establish a dynamical route to pe a periodicity and chaos. So uh, let me go to the next slide. Here I have uh, given some pictures of flapping systems, the different applications. So essentially to highlight that we have um, biopropulsion systems. So I have species here. I have a robotic bird here. So the robotic bird is uh, you know, mimicking a bird, of course. I have a dragonfly here, natural. And I have a robo, which is you know mimicking that dragonfly. So. Uh, so we have in certain cases have been able to replicate the natural system, but we have definitely not been able to give them all the stability, all the maneuvers, all the agility, uh, you know, lightness that we need. I have also added a fixed wing aircraft here. Uh, essentially, it is not a flapping system, but you can see that it is highly deformed. The wings are highly deformed. So under certain parametric condition, this wing can also, you know, essentially enter into some sort of a time dependent oscillation. Then the analysis procedure of all of these devices will be similar. We need to apply a similar, uh, you know, unsteady fluid dynamic uh, treatment to the flow part. And we need to assign a, you know, time dependent dynamical treatment of the structure. And then we have to put them together in time. The information and information exchange has to happen in time. And then only we can hope to understand the, the, the dynamics, how it is evolving. The computational uh, simulation part, it's quite challenging. As I said, many unknowns are needed to resolve all these complex structures around the body. And uh, we need to do this in time, so in a time accurate manner. So why we want to do this? Of course, it is important to see whether dynamically these things are going to, uh, you know, uh, a periodicity or chaos or, you know, something which is away from regular periodicity. Because, uh, uh, you know, for the control of set, uh, of these man-made devices to understand, you know, uh, to de design the control, we need to know if there is bifurcation happening. But that aside, the, the practical point aside, we also, you know, from a pure academic interest, it is really fascinating to see whether this kind of very large systems, we can identify uh, a chaotic behavior and uh, how the flow field would show chaos. So in flapping, actually, uh, chaos has not got much attention. Uh, in fluid mechanics in general, the, the the uh, finding of chaos has been you know, quite limited to turbulence research and that community. So in flapping, this is again quite a quite a novelty. So again, from a pure academic interest, this is this is quite nice to you know spend time on this kind of work. So for those in the audience uh, who 
probably are you know i have been saying this word uh, uh, aerodynamics complex aerodynamics and so on in case this word is not uh, you know it doesn't make much sense to you this is just a you know so briefly i'd like to show you that by aerodynamics i mean that when i have uh, bodies which are subjected to flow field like this aircraft it's a simple one it's not a, it's it's a fixed wing system so here i uh, would like to, you know, uh, show that the pressure distribution on the profile, the different profile that is facing the flow field, the pressure distribution is going to be different, different depending on the shape of the body. And based on the pressure distribution, the net pressure is going to dictate what is the net load direction the body is going to experience. And that net load is going to, you know, dictate whether you are going to face a uh, how much drag or how much uh, forward force or thrust is going to be generated or how much lift or how much downward force is going to be generated from this uh, profiles when we put them in flow field. Of course, it's not really as benign as this. If you see that blue figure, it already shows there are a lot of structures happening. So it, it, the, the pressure field will be developing with time and the body can deform and it can again change the surrounding pressure field and so on. But the basic thing is we'd like to understand the load generation around all these flow induced bodies. And when the body is moving rapidly, the load generation of course is also significantly changing with time. And in fact, the, the change with time is the key to many of these biomimetic flights that we'd like to highlight. So while I am on the topic of drones, I thought that I will just add this slide also because this is just to you know show you some of the common pictures of drones that we see uh, in you know uh, in various places. Uh, if you read papers or you know, just uh, see different type of application of drones, mostly these days because of so much unrest going on around us, we see the application of drones mainly in military. But yes, uh, military application is one of the important ones. The first one on the right corner of uh, the top right corner of this slide is uh, actually a, a miniature fixed wing aircraft. It's actually a small aircraft that we see normally that we use. Uh, but it is it is uh, basically a military application. Again, it's, it's a combat system. It can carry bombs and can you know it can be deployed. It's an unmanned system. So again, this unmanned aerial system or unmanned aerial vehicles are the common terms. Uh, drones are somewhat European, uh, but it has uh, it has been more popular. Now, micro aerial vehicles are smaller than unmanned aerial vehicles, just by you know, the size and weight. There is there is a thumb rule by which we distinguish, but essentially they mean the same thing. And uh, the other types of common drones that we have now with a lot of you know uh, application are the rotary wing, and uh, some of them are uh, simply just uh, this, the Tarantula model on the top uh, on the bottom right corner. This is just an engine induced system. So this also is a military application. I think it was used in Iraq for a lot for bomb detection. The, la the, the last one, if you are going clockwise, the, the left one, the left uh, bottom left corner is just a uh, rotating system. We see a quad rotor system here. This is a delivery system. I think you can use it for medicine delivery, you know, uh, agricultural application to deliver certain things and also maybe, uh, you know, pizza, pizza delivery. So all these things we have heard, we have seen that, okay, drones are doing this, but uh, this are, you know, all these types of drones will have their own limitations. But what we want to see for the future, what, uh, we want to see for the future are the flapping tank drones. Let me go to the next slide. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so um, the flapping technology, as I said, is rapidly developing and it's all, you know, inspired on biosystem, biomimetic systems, and we have developed the knowledge quite a lot. We have come a long way from, you know, insects cannot fly. So I don't know if you have heard of this term, but it used to be a very catchy term where people used to say that insects cannot fly because we do not understand how they fly. Uh, we understand with the more than 100 years of history of fixed wing flight, how the, you know, fixed wing aircraft fly. We understand that very well. We know the aerodynamic uh, problem associated there. But if we apply the same theory to understand how an insect, an insect flies, 
it uh, it simply you know doesn't match it gives us uh, the instead of such a tiny wing with a so, such a small wing area it has such a small you know flight speed so if we use our normal big swing uh, uh, theory then uh, it will simply generate such a small amount of load it cannot even carry that tiny insect body weight so it means that aerodynamically based on our understanding insects should not be able to fly but they do i mean they do it quite well we know that so there is definitely an aerodynamics um, secret and uh, first thing is we really needed to break that barrier to understand that how, where exactly things are going so different things are going so different because this is not a fixed flight it's a, it's a flapping flight it's a moving wing problem and for the moving wing problem there is a there is a you know domain shift in understanding so there is a different uh, mechanism by which all this kind of uh, systems uh, can generate enough aerodynamic loads to make themselves airborne so uh, the thing is we are you know developing our knowledge on this so most important knowledge that we need is definitely aerodynamic structural part the morphology of the structural material and all it's okay if we can you know develop on it but the, the secret of the flight itself is quite fascinating we still need to work on it now uh, there are you know we have understood the basic things how we fly how how uh, this kind of um, moving systems or flapping systems fly but there are still you know many many questions that are answered about there are many many species about which we have really no knowledge uh, there are many you know questions about uh, even known species like uh, uh, like you know uh, mosquito larva which gives a it, it gives a certain jolt so we don't know why that certain jolt is needed what aerodynamic and what purpose does it serve fruit fly suddenly has an escape mechanism why it does so how does it help aerodynamically what is the role of that maneuver so we have to you know understand all these things we have to do a lot of experiment a lot more simulations you know develop all this knowledge and then we have to develop the database and hopefully with that database we will be able to do some more using some data driven modeling and so on so right now we are basically talking about uh, many of these devices which are still in the lab here in the video i am showing it is taken from tu delf page it is uh, it is one of the Delphi model. They call it the Delphi. They were one of the first actually uh, university group of students developed it. Now it is a Delphi micro model. So there have been many versions of Delphi. So this one is uh, quite a nice one. It mimics the natural system quite well. There are you know, many maneuvers mimicked and very good stability. So uh, yes, we are uh, appreciating the you know the superb design of nature and we are gradually going towards it. We also need good synergy between the you know, guidance and control structures and uh, with aerodynamics in order to have a full knowledge base. So uh, let me go to the next slide. Yeah. Yeah, so this is what we would like to have in the future. These are artist impression. Okay, both these are artist impression, but we'd like to have them. Uh, you see in the right hand side video, this was uh, given to me, the Katse Force Office of Scientific Research. And uh, this is what they had as their you know, future plan. So this is a tiny device. You see that this is uh, um, hovering and it is quite slow. It can actually uh, pause and it can do, you know, you, it can take, it can do tactical operations. It, it can take photos. You can, it can plan something. It can go in a corner and simply, you know, listen. So these have great applications. These have great application, not only just the military, but there are you know, many other applications we can think of where all the normal drones that we are using today will not be useful because they simply cannot use this kind of, you know, uh, almost uh, zero to zero velocity. Hovering is not possible, except you have a rotary wing, but that will be very noisy, like a helicopter. And it also is going to be very lightweight, you know, very small you know, uh, wing area and so on. So this is for this, in order to achieve this, we really you know, build up on our um, aerodynamic knowledge. Okay. So this is a slide where I have acknowledged that uh, the secret of 
the flapping flight. The secret here, I am uh, just giving two schematics. Uh, so two clips. So one is a butterfly cap, clap and fling, and the other one is a you know generic uh, hovering insect. And uh, here schematically, I have shown you the the presence of the vertical structure, which you are seeing in the video in the middle. So this body, what I what I'm showing you in the video is a hovering body, and the hovering body, while it is moving in flow field, is generating you know this red and blue vortex structures. These are these are vortices. You know what are vortices, right? You see them in clouds. You see them in sink. You see them, you know, in a confined space when fluid is confined. So these are the vertical structure that are generated, getting dissipated, and also they're interacting with each other. So the key to flapping flight is essentially this vortices. This vortices is what, you know, essentially gives enough suction, uh, create the you know optimum pressure situation, the pressure which we need around the body in order to give you the optimum load, which is going to change with time. So vortices are really the aerodynamic secret for flapping flight. So it took us some time to understand, then it took us to identify the basic canonical um, kinematics or maneuvers, like, you know, hover or, you know, simple flapping. And then we have done over the years, a lot of, you know, simulations, experiment to understand what exactly is happening around the body. And then maybe how they are getting disturbed by the presence of this very lightweight membrane like big structure. So there are you know two parallel directions of research. One is you know develop biomimetic products without uh, just by trial and error often because there are a lot of people who are trying that. Uh, but they do not always understand all the intricacies of the aerodynamics and uh, the other influencer on aerodynamics. But uh, the other idea is, you know, keep your aspirations or your kinematics simple and keep on developing the knowledge on the intricacies of the flow field, intricacies of the dynamics. So when these two will meet, these two has to meet, these two do meet actually, then we will be able to give a you know, better product in the in the future. So this is just uh, you know briefly just to show you that uh, this I could take only from a 2017 paper which shows that the the major research in this area is happening in aerodynamics which is fitting because this is really needed and uh, in order to go towards you know MAV nano AV regime we really need to apply the biomimetic knowledge because simply the fixed wing or the rotary wing will not be able to give us what we are looking for. So before I go into discussing the dynamics, let me just uh, show you this slide where you know, some of the challenges. So the video shows that we need all the superb maneuvers. We need a perched system perched on where, and then it's just taking off. It will do some tactical you know, mission, and then it will probably again land and things like that. So these are you know, very difficult things. Looks very easy for us. We have been seeing birds doing it, insects doing it, but they are not easy. They're not easy to implement. So we are uh, we are learning from the scratch and it's uh, uh, it's also going to help us uh, in understanding the swarm dynamics is another day. So, okay. So this is to establish that uh, we need to really build on the aerodynamic knowledge and steady aerodynamic knowledge for this kind of um, this kind of system. So let me straight go into the um, dynamics. So here, uh, just to acknowledge that I've been talking about the aerodynamics a lot, talking about the intricate uh, aerodynamic structures, they kind of strengthen, weaken each other, interact with each other, which holds the key to the major, you know, uh, dynamics, underlying dynamics of system, but the complexities I already acknowledge the presence of the structure. So the flexibility of the wing. So let's try to take the flexibility to some simple you know, spring-like models because a fully flexible structure, uh, it's uh, important. We are doing it, but today I'm not going to present those results. So I just wanted to develop this knowledge and uh, wanted to show you some um, flavors of what happens when we have flexibility. Uh, acknowledged and what happens when we have the disturbance in the environment also acknowledged. So, which is again, you know, two important things that these devices will definitely face. Okay, so uh, 
let's go to the dynamics part. So I think Chandan gave a you know, nice introduction to it already. He already showed some nice videos also. So where the wake was looking periodic. So here it's just an you know, image from the internet just to show you a wake. This is not really uh, a wing. It's a bluff body, but doesn't matter. Just wanted to show you that what a regular wake means. It's a regularity of events, regular shading of vortices, which is giving you this kind of a structure. Okay. Um, now, for a wing that is slapping rapidly that uh, I showed you in all the videos so far, uh, we will also generate this kind of wave behind. So, I have, I have given some... Uh, um, uh, I have given some schematic diagrams at the top right corner. It shows the, the opposite sense structures, how they are aligned about a mean line. The alignment of clockwise and anti-clockwise vortices about a mean line is being shown if we are increasing, let's say, some important uh, quantity in the system. So, show a number could be one of them, a non-dimensional non stroke amplitude, which is, you know, uh, proportional to amplitude based law numbers and other. So these are the common parameters that we keep varying in the system to understand what are the nuances in the flow field in terms of varying these parameters. So now uh, you see that if you follow this arrow, which is going from top to, you know, uh, up to down, as you go down, you see that the regularity of the vortices are you know, still intact, but in the last one, the, the mean line itself is not, you know, it's, it's deflected. So, what we say dynamically is that uh, initially we were retaining the spatial and temporal periodicity and then we, uh, spatial symmetry and temporal periodicity and then eventually we lose the spatial symmetry but it is still periodic because a regular uh, shedding of vortices are happening. But if we kind of keep on changing the parameter, what we see is we lose this regularity of events. So for a long time, actually, we uh, the research uh, that was happening in this area, people did not acknowledge the dynamical changes of bifurcation here. People sim simply did not talk in those terms. What they presented instead is this is presented some phase averaged vorticity contours like I have shown at the, at the bottom. There are two frames you see at the bottom which are taken from, I forgot to acknowledge it, it is taken from Lenting's 2010 paper where he has, uh, uh, he has his four workers have uh, shown that uh, the vortex structure is kind of lost. It's looking bloody. It's looking, first it is looking little blurred and then it is completely mixed. And he says that it is probably chaos, but uh, well, just mentioning the word, nothing else. So we really don't know. And if it's uh, if it's really dynamical chaos, or uh, if it's something else, he is just you know using the word chaos in a you know, in a loose sense. And if it's dynamical chaos, then whether it should have some sort of a known root, you know, some of the local roots that Chandan was mentioning in today's presentation. Like if it's a period doubling root, if it's a periodic root, or if it's an intermittency root, or if there are any global roots and so on. So, and whether we can identify that's what we, you know, uh, started this work with this question. And by that, uh, by then, actually, we started this work five, six years ago. And uh, by that time, actually, fluid dynamic community, especially in the flapping, they really did not talk in those terms. Now, the other question is, of course, if we can find out dynamically or we can establish the dynamic that's underlying in the flow field, and uh, which is, of course, a very large dimensional system, can we also find out what mechanism in the flow field is triggering this? What actually is happening in the flow field in order to you know, trigger this periodicity? And whether it's a robust chaos, whether it's dynamical chaos, whether we can think about it dynamically. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so I have uh, already mentioned this point that uh, by that time, there were very few work who actually, you know, uh, talk in terms of uh, dynamical transition in flow field. And uh, what they use is uh, either they just use the aerodynamic load time history and just looking at the time history behavior and uh, doing an FFT, they will comment that, uh, okay, this is kind of... Uh, the frequency is broadbanded. There are many frequencies, not even broadbanded. So it probably is uh, chaos. And if it's completely clean, one single peak, it is periodic, no question about it. 
and uh, yeah so we wanted to you know take it in a more uh, give it a more formal treatment and uh, also wanted to find out what happening in the flow field also so before i show you some of the results that we found uh, in our uh, simulations this is uh, uh, this is before you know starting the simulation some some match with the experiments where we see that the simulation and the experiments are doing you know very well uh, in predicting the behavior okay so what is a periodic flow field so uh, by now you probably have appreciated what is a periodic flow field i'm just showing some snapshots i'm not i already showed you some videos the snapshots are taken in terms of you know different positions of the wing during a cycle so i have presented three different cycles the 10th 11th and 12th and for each i have taken four positions of the wing and you can see that during the same position for different cycles it's actually showing the same flow field exactly same flow field so it is periodic it's repeating itself very nicely okay and uh, what I have varied here is the parameter h which is the amplitude non-dimensional amplitude I mentioned the formulation of the non-dimensional frequency and the non-dimensional amplitude also in this slide okay yeah so for h equal to 0.4 this was the periodic behavior now h equal to point uh, yeah that red oval was actually showing the, the snapshots that i was showing now first signs of a periodicity here also i'm doing the same thing i'm showing four different positions and i'm showing three different three different uh, cycles 8th 15th and 24th so if you compare 8th and 24th you see that the, the same position of the wing is giving you the same flow field the same week but in between the 15th it's all mixed up it's it's not looking periodic at all there is no pattern so uh, something is wrong during this 15th cycle 8th and 24th are periodic so this was kind of the first you know red flag that something is going to happen if i keep on increasing the age then at age equal point uh, 1.25 i see that none of the cycles are actually showing any predictability it's all mixed up all of them if i now plot the the load behavior it's a it's a time signal it's better to you know look in terms of the time signal so the first one was regular periodic the second one was having periodic windows mostly but in between there were some disturbed areas so 15 cycle 15 fell in one of the disturbed areas and then h equal to 1.25 the last one it's clearly you know not repeating it's it's not a regular periodic it's quite nicely a periodic so if you look at uh, you know different types of uh, just focus on one cycle you can see that how different they are so uh, these are the the results of the time series analysis so what we uh, used here is uh, i think chandan already gave details of it we used the reconstruction of the phase space so we had the data and uh, those uh, you know, large data sets uh, were used to reconstruct the uh, the, the phase space and uh, we found out the embedding dimension we found out the optimal delay and then we plotted them in the uh, in the three dimensional space of course because even when the dimension was more than three we had to put in you know, three dimension because we cannot plot more than three so what we visualize is a projection of you know higher dimensional uh, space to a three dimensional space and the fft values are you know first one is uh, nice periodic with uh, higher harmonics second one is uh, having some you know well defined peaks but in between i see you know uh, uh, kind of many peaks some more smaller disturbance and the last one is clearly broadbanded i see you know many frequency participation so the second one we are not sure what exactly it is because the phase portrait in projected on the 3d domain looks like it's uh, going to get some sort of a toroidal shape but it's not so nicely developed but of course we have a limitation of data set we cannot this is not a you know low order system that we can you know simulate and simulate and generate as long a data set as you want. So you are simulating an unsteady Navier strokes with a, you know, quite a large domain and high resolution domain. So you have to stop somewhere because all these things anyway take weeks to simulate. So the second one, we are not sure what it is. But the look of the time histories, 
look like they are probably intermittency now uh, in order to you know look at it uh, through the 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 recurrence uh, treatment we also did the recurrence uh, plot so based on the property of recurrence the first one periodic one is very nice and clean you see the you know uh, the parallel uh, diagonals uh, parallel to the main diagonal so which is clearly um, periodic the last one is quite clearly you know uh, lots of broken diagonals for so very small length so clearly chaotic the second one actually gives you a good idea of intermittency because the FFT was not conclusive. We saw there were you know many frequencies, but we also saw, saw sharp peaks. So because it was all mixed up, uh, what we had later done. So this was one of the first analysis that we did, and I thought I will show you this. Uh, later on, we learned that wavelet would be a better way to do this because wavelet will look at the frequency participation in a temporal manner. So we will be able to identify the periodic window, a periodic window separately in time. But if you do a just normal FFT, then you kind of average the behavior. So FFT is not good. And that's what that time, you know, the papers that we were reading, that's what people were doing. So it was not really conclusive for us at all. And nobody talked about intermittency in flapping so far. So, but the recurrence gives us a very good understanding of it. We can see the, the clear periodic windows and they are broken by the chaotic window. So this was, you know, a very good uh, indicator of type 1 intermittency because we also compared it with the Lorentz system, which is known to have a type 1 intermittency. So we simulated the Lorentz system and uh, varied this parameter R and we saw that, okay, the, the exact, the same behavior, what we observed in this very large order systems with, you know, so many unknowns, they're remarkably similar. And that was very encouraging. And that is how we first you know, started this work. And after that, I think we have simulated, you know, various types of uh, kinematics, uh, various types of uh, parametric regime. And we have relied quite heavily on uh, time series tools. Uh, we, for certain work, we have also used, you know, uh, the, the largest Lyapunov exponent and exponent and correlation dimension uh, calculation in order to, you know, establish it you know, in a better footing. Uh, but uh, yes, so it is fascinating to see that indeed it is following one of the well-known rules. This is uh, something we thought of doing uh, instead of just using the time series of the load. We also wanted to check one of the flow field parameters. So we took a uh, we, we took a window in the flow field in the way as I have so shown here through this uh, you know dashed uh, region, and uh, it uh, yeah it actually tells you that uh, if you do the correlation, this is just a normal you know correlation expression that I've written where sigma is the vorticity. So we are using the vorticity field vorticity correlation with respect to a reference time t ref. So how the correlation developing with respect to that reference time t ref for the periodic one, it is the correlation is developing. It's also you know periodic because the correlation becomes uh, they are uh, strongly correlated uh, periodically with the you know when the time uh, uh, after the time period. Uh, the flow field exactly mimics, uh, it exactly repeats itself, and then the correlation goes close to zero when it is exactly exactly dissimilar. Uh, goes to uh, then uh, when we have the second one, the intermittency, where we have the intermittent window around that 15 cycle. You can see there it is it is close to zero. So zero correlation means you don't find correlation between the flow field structure. So this was also helpful to establish the same. So it was a kind of an intermittency route, and uh, we also have done, you know, uh, uh, more detailed study of it, which I'm not uh, presenting today. But I said that we wanted to, you know, also find out what is a flow field trigger. So this is just a summary to show you the near field, just the leading edge vortex, so the main white structure that you see here on the screen. So how exactly they are different from one cycle to another. And we later found out that this actually holds the key to, you know, first trigger to the whole thing going to chaos in a cascading manner. The first little phase difference that you see in the leading edge vortex generation, and then finally it's travel time, and it's finally going to the reaching to the trailing edge and interacting with the trailing edge vortex. And that slight difference 
between cycles give rise to a different structure of different strands in a different location and that information propagates downstream using some of the basic vortex interaction mechanisms that we have known before and uh, those mechanisms will sustain the chaos in the far field so finally everything will become chaos so it started with putting a magnifying glass on the near field on the leading edge vortex so that was actually holding the key to vortex so that was what was giving us chaos in a flat inclined we have also found quasi periodic roots actually we have found quasi periodic roots in most of our situation that we have simulated uh, this is just an example of uh, sorry so this is just an example of a quasi periodic root here i can uh, I, I i show you you know uh, a, the comparison between uh, two cycles like starting with 11 12 11 13 so how cycle by cycle the things are slightly gradually changing the position and the strength of the vortex cores so this is quasi periodic there is no no rapid change no drastic change we still can identify the the wake structure but we see that they are always in the neighborhood not exactly falling on each other so this is what a classic example of quasi periodic situation we also used you know other tests and uh, here the toroidal shape quasi periodicity was established and then we have a chaotic uh, um, phase portrait. Of course, we don't have a full de well developed uh, strange attractor simply because we don't have such a long time history, but it will uh, it will show you chaos through the time series test. So let's take an interim summary because I wanted to, you know, uh, show you a few other uh, results where we uh, where we acknowledge the role of flexibility and wind fluctuation. So what we have seen uh, for this simple flapping situation is um, a type one intermittency route to chaos and uh, we have also uh, seen quasi periodicity quasi periodic route to chaos for a different flapping situation but uh, for both uh, qualitatively the flow pattern gave chaos and quantitatively all the you know time series tests uh, gave us also chaos same way and in both situations we could see that the primary culprit was a leading edge vortex which was of course triggered to a periodicity of course we have not presented the details of that mechanism here because uh, we didn't have that much time and uh, okay some of the publications are also listed in this so let's just quickly acknowledge the role of flexibility here i just wanted to you know show you uh, this is essentially a, a taking a side step i'm not uh, not showing you the uh, flow field behavior here I'm just showing you the flexible structure so what kind of flexible structure on the other hand which is subjected to flow can can respond so this is a flying uh, fixed wing aircraft you see the horizontal fin or the tail horizontal tail and uh, it is rapidly oscillating so the same clip is playing over and over it is rapidly oscillating of course it is subjected to flow now this is a situation which definitely is dangerous we don't see this normally we shouldn't be able to we shouldn't be seeing this normally but if we see them that means that something has gone wrong and we should have been able to predict it and this is where you know uh, another mechanism this is a flow induced instability so this instability we should have been able to predict a similar thing can happen in any you know uh, wing like structure under subjected to flow field if the structure is very light if the structure is you know uh, in terms of its inertia and stiffness should be commensurate to the flow field uh, the speed of the flow and the flow behavior surrounding it together they can take it to instability so it doesn't matter how big or how small the structure is how stiff it is it just has to get the correct aerodynamic condition around it and it can go there so it, it's a couple system it depends each depend on uh, others you know properties in order to go into this hyper medi state so here uh, the thing is uh, just to you know uh, just to point it out that uh, we don't have a uh, we don't have an actuated system it is not a wing which is being actuated it is a it is a situation which is entirely flow driven so it is a different physics now we are trying to look at so a flexible structure a flow together what they can do in order to give you the unsteady situation so this is something we also you know simulated in our lab and uh, in a wind tunnel there was a flexible wing designed like this and there is just a flow if we increase the flow beyond a certain value it shows oscillation 
Okay, so this dynamically to tell you that normally when the system is quite simple, not too much complications in it, just one or two mode of oscillations allowed, we see a hop location. Okay, so let's see some of this when we have uh, fluctuation. So this is a slide of you know, the experimental facility in the lab. This is a low speed wind tunnel. So again, I have two videos here. You can see the left one, there is no oscillation. Of course, the wind speed is small and the right side, there is a sustained oscillation. The sustained oscillation is what uh, happening after the hot bifurcation. So of course, there is non-linearity involved. Now, uh, there is a fluctuating wind. Okay. So if we now acknowledge that, okay, nature is not really giving us a sterile wind condition like a wind tunnel, then if we have fluctuations present, then how the dynamics would be changing. So very quickly wanted to show you some demonstration of that. So let's see, I have a nonlinear structure. Now. The, the right uh, top corner is giving you the nonlinear behavior of the stiffness of the structural uh, behavior. And the force displacement is showing three different types of behavior. Middle one is linear. The first one is that it's gradually increasing with the displacement is hard nonlinearity. And when it is decreasing with the displacement, it's soft nonlinearity. So let's consider the hard nonlinearity first. We did this experimentally. And uh, normally the hop bifurcation is what the, the top left corner, uh, top left uh, picture is. It's just showing a normal hop bifurcation behavior, supercritical hop. Let's remember that under hard nonlinearity, we get supercritical hop. And the time histories are gradually going from, you know, uh, damped oscillation to uh, limit cycle oscillation through, you know, four different wind speeds I have mentioned. is through, again, a noise-induced intermittency because I had noise acknowledged in my system. So, uh, what actually is happening is, if, why I'm calling is a noise-induced intermittency because I have in between, you know, periodic burst and then finally I get to full periodicity. If you look at the video, it shows that there are some, you know, rest period and then there are oscillations, there are rest period oscillations. So this is actually the intermittency that you can see in the in the lab situation. So this was very interesting because the V normally where the hop bifurcation route to instability is established, we see uh, the noise is actually disturbing it and it's giving you an intermittency route to instability, which was kind of you know, very interesting, very new for this community. And uh, okay, with this, uh, we can again do some recurrence quantification and you can find out some recurrence quantification based measures which show you the changes so the change in the dynamics is quite palpable through these measures. Uh, very quickly, I just wanted to show you maybe a couple of more slides. I'm almost done. So now if I have a soft.